I am the woodpecker today with my helpers. We're making crosses. And it's super easy. Hopefully, my new shop will look like this. But before moving in, the structure must be completed. In this episode, I'm focusing on how I made the trusses. The very first thing I do is to print the full-scale printout of the base of the rafters and the top of the king posts. Since I'm making patterns, I drill 8 holes to help me with the tie beam mortises. Next, I make a jig to help me make the open mortise on top of the king post. Speaking of king posts, I start with them. First thing to do is to cut the bad part on top of the king post. By bad part, I mean the round trunk. Then, with an almost square surface, I trace the dovetail shape at the top. The inspiration for my king post came from a drawing of the king post of an 1822 Vermont church. Then with my new jig I cut the shoulder of the open mortise on top. Using an angle jig makes them deeper in the back. The same angle as the dovetail. Then it's time to cut the base of the dovetail. The sides of the dovetail. And finally the top. The rest of the cut are done with a reciprocating saw. And as always, I finish it all with the hand saw. Next, I make the cheek smooth and square with end tools. With my pattern, I can check if everything is okay. Then, if it is, I remove the waste of the open mortise. Here they are, done on both sides. Only four more to go. After that, I work on the tie beams. Just moving them is an Olympic sport, because they weigh 360 pounds. First thing I do is cut one side straight. Then I measure the length of the tie beam and cut it. When it's cut, I find the most both side and use it as the top of the beam. Then we turn it, top facing up. Using my holes pattern, I mark the center of the ogre bit holes. Then, just to help me see better, I mark them with a sharpie. Next, I drill the holes making sure to put the spur of the bit inside each nail's hole. When the eight of them are drilled, I clean between the holes with a chisel. Then it's just a matter of repeating this 14 times again. Then 
Next, I use a string as a straight line to mark the center of the offset of the base of the king post. And this is what the rafters should look like when they're done. Same thing for the king post. Then I got dazzled. Three of my listeners came to help us on a Saturday. Lifting those 335 pounds rafters with four people became a real charm. Then it was time to make the base of the rafters. With my pattern, I marked the first one. Then I make a series of cuts to make the end tenon. Christian breaks the pieces. Vesa is the lucky one who makes all the tenons with the most nuts in them. Meanwhile, Eric cuts all the long braces. At one moment, it really looks like a small factory. When Eric is finished with his braces, he begins to make tenons. Here's how they're done. After Christian removes the bulk of the wood, with my pattern, I find the placement of the tenon. And double check it. Then, with a the square, I trace the cheeks. Using a jigsaw, I cut most of it. Again, the rest is cut with the reciprocating saw. Then all the surfaces are worked with end tools. Unless there's a nut. But only Vincent got the nutty ones. Then it's time to work on the top of the rafters. The first thing I do is to roughly cut the end at the right angle. Then we try the fit of the mortise and tenon. If they don't fit, I rework them. Okay, c'est bon. When both sides fit, we put the king post on top of the rafters and center it. When it's all centered, I mark the real angle cut. Then I carry the lines to the other side. After, the rafter is set free from the tie beam. Then I can make the rafter top tenon. The chainsaw cut is recut with a jigsaw. Then the king post is cut to length and the bottom tenon is made. Now we're ready to do a test fit. Gravity is replaced by heavy duty tie straps. All five trusses took us a week to make and the following Saturday, Vincent and Eric came back to help. Vincent makes the purlin recess 
while I make all the structure braces mortises. Speaking of braces, Eric is making some more. There are a lot of braces in this building. But we don't always have help. So, when we're alone, we have to be creative to move pieces of wood heavier than 300 pounds. But all this effort is worth it when I look at the final product. And if you want to see how those trusses got there, you'll have to come back for another episode of The Woodpecker. Woodpecker